the city hasn't quite forgotten him. A distinctive statue of Abbe Faria stands almost alive in a busy square in Panjim city. Everyone who enters the capital city of Goa passes by him or passes him by. Years ago, every child heard from his parents the famous Katorre Baji story. Katorre Baji? In Konkani, the language of Goa, this would mean, do it, just chop the vegetables. Today, the mists are descending over the man, over his work. Who Faria? Faria who? A city councillor wanted the statue on the logo for the corporation of Panjim. But she had a battle on her hands. It was in early 2002 when we decided to have a logo for the council. So we uh, uh, went about deciding what exactly should come into the logo. And I felt that Abe Faria was an important landmark in uh, Panjim City, besides the balustrade and other items. Uh, so the, many liked the idea and uh, we put it forth to the artists. They worked on getting the logo ready. Unfortunately, when the logo was put up for approval at the council meeting, there was quite a hue and cry. And uh, um, some of the councillors even felt that why Abe Faria? Why can't we have uh, maybe the Martyr's Memorial or the statue in Miramar, but not Abe Faria? I really couldn't understand why at that moment, but then it was clear that uh, uh, Abe Faria is not a Goan and uh, He's Portuguese and he should not figure in the logo. Uh, lucky for me, I had taken the history along with me as I always go prepared for meetings. And uh, it was not very e easy convincing them, but I think I did a good job at that. And um, the logo has the statue of Abe Faria on it. And I'm very happy that I managed to do that for the council. Here and there and elsewhere, people are still fascinated by the character and work of this priest turned scientist. Abe Faria uh, has, in, has been inspiring me for uh, uh, more uh, for one and a half decades or so. Uh, especially when uh, initially when uh, we used to talk of Abe Faria. I we used to wonder who this person is and even my parents who were well versed with Portuguese that time, my parents, my uncle who is a medic cirurgian that is from the old school of uh, Portuguese school of uh, medical college, they also used to talk of Abbe Faria you know. But when I inquired about them who this Abad Faria is, they couldn't tell me they couldn't even tell me whether he was a, he was born in Goa. It is uh, Dr. Rajendra Hegde who had the idea. I must have mentioned sometime that something should be done on Abe Faria. And uh, he took up the idea. And uh, he asked me to translate it. Uh, we had a lot of trouble in getting the original copy in French and it took about six months for me to translate the whole thing because uh, uh, translation is like uh, turning a painting in colors into black and white sketch. She decided there's nothing like animal magnetism which was the prevailing theory which uh, led to hypnosis but suggestion which was important. In how he discovered this or how he showed it to people is that by, arr by arranging a series of lectures which anybody could attend by paying uh, five uh, francs per session. And he would hypnotize everybody uh, in a very dramatic fashion. He had his own trademark. He prepared them and suddenly shouted at them, sleep! And most of them would just fall off in a trance. José Custódio Faria was born in Goa on the 31st of May, 1756. He was the only son of Rosa Maria de Souza of Kanduli.
and Kaitan Vitorin Faria of Kolwal. The parents' marriage did not work out. They sought permission from the church to separate. The mother joined the convent of Santa Monica at Old Goa as a nun. The father joined the seminary at Shoran and became a priest. William Faria is a direct descendant of the Faria family. He is 87 years old and lives at present in Kanduli. My father's side, uh, my father's grand, great grandfather is the brother of Abbe Faria's father. Yeah, they are from Kolwali. Because they got, we got our ancestral home there. Well, at the moment, it's not there because, you know, after our absence from Goa for so many years, over 60 years, nobody was there to take care of it. And it has come down, you see. Only the property is left, but not the house. The house of the D'Souza family in Kanduli, where José Custódio was born, has survived the long passage of time. It was... Um, given to Providoria by the late Mrs. D'Souza, who was residing there. This is your book? Yes. This was produced in London, because in Goa it was not possible to print this book. There were no facilities. What you read in my book that I have written is what has happened. I mean, this is abroad, not in Goa when he was in Rome and in France. Those sort of uh, historical events I have written in my book. Abbe Fari's uh, mother was the only daughter. And uh, I, I don't know really what happened after Abbe Fari and his father went to Portugal. And um, his mother joined the convent, as you know. Uh, so that's where the story more or less ends. Uh, this is my father. His name is José Francisco de Faria. <laughs> he was a bit uh, stubborn. My father had nine children altogether, of which I am the last. At the age of 15, José Custódio and his father sailed out of Goa. It was to be a long voyage. Portugal, Rome, France. He was never to return home to Goa. But the larger horizon would mark him as an ever-questing mind and soul. He would one day be the talk of France as a pioneer hypnotist. Perhaps the question to ask is, why should the man not be forgotten? Did he contribute anything valuable to human knowledge or well-being? Dr. Rajendra Hegre, a psychiatrist, is very enthusiastic about Faria and his work. When I, when I started my practice as a psychiatrist after my MD in 1982, and I, I also was well connected with the Konkani Bhasha movement, that's our mother tongue, that time, I one day, I found a book by, by title Abbe Faria. And this particular book it was written by a, by a former education director, Dr. Panduranga Varde. And uh, I just, because the title appeared, uh, appeared to me familiar, I, I took the book and started reading and then I found that this particular book is the translation, Kokni translation of a biography of Abbe Faria written by a Nobel laureate neurophysician Dr. Egesh Muniz, a Portuguese neurophysician who got Nobel Prize along with uh, Surgeon Dr. Lima way back in 1937, with whom I, I was well uh, connected because of history of uh, psychiatry, history of medicine. And he, he writes very highly of Abbe Faria 
and in between he quotes from Abbe Faria, Abbe Faria's book and he quotes from Dalgad also. And I found that all the ideas which were expressed in this book, especially from the court of Abbe Faria, these were very original ideas. In this book, when I looked at the history part, there is mention about the Austrian physician Franz Anton Mesmer. And immediately after him, they have mentioned a Scottish physician, J uh, James Braid. Now, Faria and another teacher of his, Puisegur by name, they have done lot in this particular area and their names are missing. In 1819, Abbe Faria published his book entitled De la cause du sommeil lucide, of the cause of lucid sleep. Of the intended four volumes, only one saw the light of day. Faria died the same year, on the 20th of September 1819, of a cerebral stroke. He was 63 years old. There are those who believe that the author wrote three other volumes. Were they published? What was the fate of these books? Will they be found someday? The fame of the father of hypnotism rests almost entirely on his one published work. I was in France in 1952 and the first place in France I was in was Marseille and a few miles of Marseille there is a famous island of Dif where Abbe Faria is supposed to be in prison. So there was a French friend. I said, why are you so keen going that? He said, that is my compatriot, Abbe Faria. And they showed me the prison, the hole he had made, and where Dante stayed, in which room, how they managed to dig a hole, and how they communicated. And the guys used to tell it as if it was a, a real story. And, um, but the Frenchman said, no, but it's not, it's not true. It is Alexandre Dumas' imagination. I said, we are not concerned. For us, Indians, legend is more important than history. And history doesn't affect you unless it becomes a legend. History has to become a legend. Shivaji has become a legend. Napoleon has become a legend. And Abhi Faria is a legend. And in case of Abhi Faria, it's very difficult to distinguish between legend and fact about his life. For example, Mikhail Bryanov, the president of the Moscow Psychotherapeutic uh, Academy suggests that he was imprisoned in the Bastille just before it was stormed during the French Revolution. But there nobody else supporting it. He also says that he invented the game of drafts or checkers uh, because the guard at the Bastille uh, was very fond of the game and he wanted to extend it as much as possible. So Abbe Fari extended the game from 80 squares to 100 squares game. And also he says that he was imprisoned in the Chateau Dif, which is also not corroborated by anybody except by Alexander Dumas, uh, where Rabbi Fari appears as a character in his book, um, Count of Monte Cristo. No, his people in Goa did not forget the hypnotist and pioneer. Decades ago, a road in the city of Margaon was named after him. Abad Faria, as he was called in Portuguese, 
was also the name of an institute of higher education in Margaon, Liceu do Abad Faria, and a hospital of psychiatry in Panjim, Hospital do Abad Faria. In the little village of his birth, Kanduli, the government primary school bears his name. That's about it. They haven't quite forgotten, but perhaps they will soon. since we are small, that he was a magician and he came from Kalangud or Kandulim side to live there. That's the maximum I know about him. Mostly the ladies used to flock to him. I saw one postcard, picture postcard of Goa. There is Abhi Faria's statue. And it is said he is doing his monstrous experiments on women that the woman is he is seducing the woman so this idea also is current that he was not merely hypnotist was curing people but he was seducing women <laughs> पुर्तगाल <laughs> See, every civilization or society have developed their own heroes. And these heroes, given, uh, given identity and inspiration to the society and to the younger generations to look upon those great people which gives them the incentive to rise to be great as well. Goa has a lot of, uh, large number of them because Goa's history seems to be quite good and very old as well. And there are many persons who have achieved, attained great heights, but they are forgotten. And uh, I feel that they have to be honored and our uh, younger generation uh, should uh, know about them. And that gives them sort of continuity in, as a society and identity. Goan artists like Dom Martin and cartoonist Alexis are keen that the great hypnotist be celebrated. One thing a museum can be built in his honor, where all the tourists can go. He can have all the facets of his life depicted there. 
legend as well as fact. And you can have a restaurant with uh, gone Portuguese and Italian and French food and all such things. Then you can have a seminar in his honor where uh, well-known psychiatrists and other writers can speak about various facets of his life. And the papers of the proceedings can be published in book form. Plus a biography by a Goan, Dr. Delgado, who did a lot of research and published uh, his biography uh, about 100 years back. That also can be reprinted. And you could probably do a feature film also on him. The work of José Custódio Faria is of interest to people elsewhere in the world too. Dr. Luciana Stegnano Piccio, a writer in Rome, and her late husband have extensively researched the life of the Goan hypnotist. Dr. Laurent Carré, French psychiatrist residing in the US, has translated and edited Abbe Faria's treatise the La Cause du Sommeil Lucide, and a biography of Faria by Daniel Gelasio Dalgad. The book has been published in the USA. As you know, I started a collection of English translations of classical French texts on hypnosis. The first pioneer I featured was Ambroise Auguste Liebault the 19th century French champion of psychosomatic medicine who inspired Bernheimer, Coué, Freud and many other great minds. Faria has a number of achievements to his credit. He experimented with hypnosis, a state he called lucid sleep, on more than 5,000 individuals. He questioned Mesmer's theory of magnetic fluid and believed that magnetic fits were not only unnecessary to healing but potentially harmful. His own approach was to keep his subjects in a state of calm and he believed the magnetic fit to be a state contrary to the normal development of nature. He held the original view, though uncomfortably caught between mesmerists, skeptics and religious opponents, that hypnotic phenomena were not due to magnetism, trickery or the devil, but to the expectancy and cooperation of the patient. He discovered the suggestive method of inducing and interrupting trance verbally. He observed and described numerous hypnotic phenomena, now well known, and gave them psychological explanations. He postulated that ordinary sleep and the hypnotic state are of similar nature, a theory that, although it has now been proven wrong, was later adopted by the school of Nancy. Faria was instrumental in bringing about a crucial conceptual shift regarding what causes the trance state. Of course, like any other researcher in the early stages of a given science, he did not have the physiological and scientific knowledge his successors were going to accumulate. And several passages of his book describing physiological processes are erroneous and make the modern reader smile. This, however, should take nothing away from this significant contribution. As the Abbe reminds us himself, Men always deem their knowledge superior to that of man from previous or future times. But those who have cast off their pride and sounded the depth of their own wisdom are not ashamed to admit that, while one is capable of much learning, one will never leave the abyss of ignorance. Man's inalienable lot is to experience a combination of few truths and many errors. Abbe Faria has held a hypnotic fascination for creative writers. The most famous of these was the great Alexander Dumas, who fictionalized and immortalized Faria. His classic novel, The Count of Monte Cristo, has been filmed in more than one version. Here, Abbe Faria is an old priest, considered insane and held prisoner at the Chateau d'If in France. He points the way to a wonderful hidden treasure on an island. The novel was dramatized in Paris in 1848. Who are you? 
Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the Ave Faria. A prisoner like yourself. <laughs> and you? Edmund Dantes. But I was under the impression that I... I was digging towards the outer wall. Parlez-vous anglais? Italiano? I am Abbe Faria. I have been a prisoner in Chateau Deep for 11 years. Five which have been spent digging this tunnel. <laughs> oh, well, when I told them I did not know what the treasure of Sparta was, I lied. You lied? I'm a priest, not a saint. Well, on their island off the Italian coast. Monte Cristo. Yes. yes. Use, use your head. Follow the clue. The tunnel's blocked. I can't you escape. Keep digging. When you escape, use it for good. Only for good. No, I will surely use it for my revenge. Contemporary playwrights ridiculed Faria's experiments. In 1813, a play published by Madame Vittorine Mojira was entitled Mesmeromanie. Another by Jules Vernet called Magnetismomanie. In 1949, Fred Washman wrote a play in Portuguese, Os Padres Faria. In 1992, Asif Karimboy published his play Abe Faria. In 2000, Derek Antal completed the manuscript of his play entitled Faria. In 1941, the pioneer Konkani writer Varde Valaulikar, better known as Shenoy Goimbab, wrote his biography. And Propersia Correa Fons celebrated it with a preface in Portuguese. Luis Vaz is in the process of having an epistolary novel published. It is to be called Abe Faria, the making of a pioneering Indian hypnotist. There are many landmarks in his life. First of all, at, at the age of seven or so, his parents separated. The father went back to the seminary where he had studied earlier, and the mother became a nun and joined the convent. So Abbe Faria was brought up by his uh, uncles until the age of 15. Then the father took him to Europe. So that was another traumatic separation from homeland. He went to Portugal, where he knew only the father and the Portuguese language. Beyond that, he knew nothing. Then from there, immediately he was shifted to the Urban College of Propaganda Fide in Rome, where he studied for the priesthood and the father tried to get a doctorate in theology. There he had to study not only Italian, but also Latin. And he wrote a 63 chapter long uh, thesis for his dissertation, for his degree in, in theology. And he wrote a paper on the Holy Spirit, which he dedicated to the Pope. Apparently the Pope was so impressed that he invited him to preach in the Sistine Chapel uh, with himself and the audience. It's not every day that a person is invited to speak or to preach a sermon to the Pope? I don't think it was easy for someone to, from, uh, co from the colonies to go and live and work in France, uh, France or any part of Europe. But at this point of time, Europe had much to offer because it was a period of enlightenment. It was a period of liberalism. Uh, there was rise of new mentality, new thinking. Uh, it was also a period during which uh, there was encouragement of uh, scientific innovations and uh, enrichment of culture. The queen, Portuguese queen, came to know that he had been invited by the pope to speak before him. So she invited him to speak at uh, Kelo's palace in her chapel and uh, preach to her. But what happened was that uh, people there were known to him and the queen to whom he owed everything, uh, was there in the audience. And uh, 
he got extremely nervous and got straight fight and he couldn't speak a word. But the father was below the pulpit and he told him, Katurra Baji, in chop off these vegetables. So immediately he got a surge of confidence and spoke uh, very well. But the important thing in this is this probably weighed in his mind and he wondered why such a small suggestion had such an impact on him. And I think my theory is that eventually it led to his uh, uh, theory that uh, what causes hypnosis is a suggestion effectively put out. Since he was a dark man, not a French man, uh, the uptight Parisian society uh, after the novelty uh, was no longer a novelty started ridiculing him and he was the, and became the butt of jokes not only in the press but also in the in the theater and he, uh, his students also left him and he was left in penury so eventually there was nothing else for him to do but to write a book on his uh, theories he completed only one volume on lucid sleep and died soon after completing it he planned uh, four volumes but only one was completed that is his only personal legacy now that remains, except that he has figured as a character in Count of Monte Cristo, the famous novel by Alexander Dumas. José Custódio Faria was born in Goa, at a time when Portuguese rule was seen as unjust and oppressive. Fatma, as a historian, can you throw some light on the social situation in Goa at the time of Faria's childhood? what may have led Faria Sr. to migrate to Europe with his son and not to some other part of India? During this period, the race relations were uneven. There was discrimination based on color and religion. Locals were not taken, given high post in the government and the church hierarchy. Local Goan Christians were not accepted in religious orders. Hindus did not have the right to education and the right to perform rituals and ceremonies in Goa, although they played a dominant role in Goan economy. And they were encouraged by the Portuguese in this area. However, there were some changes during Faria's childhood, especially when Marques de Pombal became the Prime Minister of Portugal. He introduced uh, various reforms for Portugal and its colonies. And he decreed that local born people should be taken in, should be given high posts in the government and in the church hierarchy. On 20th September 1945, by public contribution, the statue of José Custódio Faria was formally installed in the city square. Abbe Faria, or Abad Faria, hypnotizing a lady at his feet, now almost a signature of Panjim City. It was the work of the famous Goan sculptor Ramchandra Pandurang Kamath. At precisely 6 p.m., the public square was seen bubbling with people. So many people that some hung from the windows of surrounding houses, like so many human bunches. The governor arrived with his military entourage. The band of the well-known Master Kayal broke into celebratory music. Sculptor Ramchandra Pandurang Kamath was born at Madkai, Goa. He studied at the JJ School of Arts, Bombay, then pursued further studies at the London Royal School of Arts. He won many laurels and medals. In 1933, he received the gold medal of the Royal School of Arts, London, for his work on Adam and Eve. Among his noted sculptures, we find the equestrian statue of the Rani of Jansi in bronze at Jansi, UP, and the goddess Lakshmi in bronze in Mumbai. The 10-foot Abbe Faria statue in bronze has been acclaimed as his masterpiece. Psychiatrists and therapists the world over have heard of Faria. Therapy has gained much from insights from his book. 
Dr. Mikhail Buyanov, president of the Psychiatrist Society in Moscow, writes about the father of hypnotism. In 1819, Faria passed away, but his book is here to stay. Thousands of psychotherapists in every country and continent know his name. His mystery lies in his talent, courage, and quest for truth. His mystery is the mystery of a genius who was persecuted, oppressed, and tormented while he lived, and then made into a banner or a symbol after his death. His mystery was the mystery of someone who was ahead of his time and who blazed a trail for his descendants due to his sacrifice. Abbe Faria, ever a hypnotic figure, a man without a homeland, a colored man in 18th century white-skinned Europe, a man of religion standing up for the scientific spirit, a man of reason and a man of God, admired, ridiculed and too fascinating to be forgotten. <laughs>